Okay, let's talk about complex conjugates. Here we go. Some FOIL problems. First of all, I want you to know, before we even begin, that these two sets of parentheses are complex conjugates of each other. These two are complex conjugates of each other. These two over here are complex conjugates of each other. What do you notice about all of them? All I've done, it's kind of like a difference of squares, isn't it? I've created a difference of squares with my FOIL problem. 3 plus 5i becomes 3 minus 5i. That's its conjugate. 1 plus i and 1 minus i are conjugates. 1 minus 2i and 1 plus 2i are conjugates. I just flip the sign of this middle term so I can create a difference of squares. And then the reason I do that is because you're going to notice something interesting whenever you FOIL them out. When you multiply conjugates by each other, something interesting happens. Let's FOIL. 3 times 3 is 9. Outside, minus 15i. Inside, plus 15i, last terms, minus 25i squared. Notice that the two middle terms go away, right? Plus and minus 15i. And also notice that you have an i squared here. And as you probably recall by now, that's really a negative 1. So we're going to just take this negative 1 and we're going to use that to change the sign of the 25. It's plus 25 now instead. Which means that we have just 9 plus 25. That means that's 34. Weird. The i's went away, didn't they? The i's went away. 1 plus i and 1 minus i. Let's boil it out. 1 times 1 is 1. Outer terms, minus i. Inner terms, plus i. Last terms, minus i squared. Notice that the middle two numbers, the negative i and the positive i, go away. And this is really 1 minus i squared, right? But i squared is negative 1, so it's really 1 minus negative 1. It's really 1 plus 1. The i's went away. 1 minus i, 1 plus i, foils out to give you just a real number, 2. One more example. 1 minus 2i, 1 plus 2i. Foil it out. 1 times 1 is 1. Plus 2i, minus 2i. Last terms, minus 4i squared. The middle two terms go away. The i squared just flips the sign of the 4. And I end up with 1 plus 4. That ends up being 5. Now the reason this is important is because if you understand that multiplying by a complex conjugate will get rid of the i's, that means you know how to divide. We're going to go ahead and do it right now. Now we can divide complex numbers. The way that we get complex numbers and we do a division problem is we multiply by the complex conjugate of the bottom, the denominator. I want to get rid of the i's in the bottom of the fraction. This is the same thing as we do whenever we want to get rid of square roots, right? It's kind of like uh, rationalizing the denominator. We want to get rid of the i in the bottom. So what we do is we multiply both top and bottom by the complex conjugate of the denominator, 1 plus 2i in this case. So now the top becomes a FOIL problem. 3 plus 5i times 1 plus 2i. Multiply straight across the top. First terms, 3 times 1 is 3. Outer terms, 6i. Inner terms, 5i. Last terms, plus 10i squared. On the bottom, 1 plus 2i, 1 minus 2i, we just did up here. That ends up being 5 after you FOIL it out. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? So now let's look at what happens. First of all, see that 6i and 5i right here? I can combine those, can't I? I can make that a 3 plus 11i's. And then the i squared here, all it does is change the sign of the 10. So that becomes a minus. I have 3 plus 11i minus 10, and that's all over 5. Now let's go ahead and combine the 3 and the negative 10. 3 minus 10 is negative 7 plus 11i over 5. We're almost there. Let's split it up into two fractions, and we have our answer. It is negative 7 fifths plus 11 fifths of an i. One more time. 7 plus 3i all over 4i. Well, really, this is the same thing as 0 
plus 4i. you got to think of it that way, right? And so that means the complex conjugate of this is going to be 0 minus 4i. Now, we're not going to have to FOIL because there's no 0. That's, that's pointless to write out, right? But we can multiply both top and bottom by negative 4i. The reason that we do this is because now this is a distributed property problem on the top. Negative 4i times 7 is negative 28i. Negative 4i times, negative, times positive 3i is negative 12i squared. And that's all going to be all over 4i times negative 4i, which is negative 16i squared. As we've learned by now, the i squared just changes the sign of the 12 on top, and it changes the sign of the 16 on bottom. And so what you really end up with is negative 28i plus 12 all over 16. But we need to write this in the proper format. I'm going to break this first up into two fractions, negative 28 over 16i plus 12 over 16. I'm going to reduce those fractions, but then remember, the thing with the i always goes last. 12 sixteenths reduces to 3 over 4 minus 28 over 16 reduces down. Let's see, let's do this by 2s. That would be 14 over 8, which becomes 7 over 4. And there's my answer, 3 fourths minus 7 fourths i. A plus or minus B I. All right. Done with complex numbers. That's enough with that. We got a couple word problems to work through, and then we'll be done with the notes.